have 16 billion of cash, not because we want 16 billion of cash or because we expect interest rates to go up or because we expect equities to go down. We have 16 billion of cash because we don't see anything that makes us want to part with that cash where we feel we're getting enough for our money. Berkshire has meaningful free cash flow, a short duration bond portfolio, and your buyer of low multiple high quality private businesses and a few stocks. Assuming that the stimulative economic policy is to deal with the recession, eventually cause interest rates to go up and maybe equity values to come down, Berkshire seems very well positioned to benefit. Would you comment? In terms of how we're positioned, you know, we have 16 billion of cash, not because we want 16 billion of cash or because we expect interest rates to go up or because we expect equities to go down. We have 16 billion of cash because we don't see anything that makes us want to part with that cash where we feel we're getting enough for our money. But we would spend it, we spent it Monday morning on the right sort of uh, uh, business or even if, if, if we could find equities that we liked uh, or if we could find like last year we found some junk bonds we liked. We're not finding them this year at all because prices have changed dramatically. So we're, we're not really ever positioning ourselves. We're simply trying to do the smartest thing we can every day when we come to the office and if there's nothing smart to do, cash is the default uh, option. Uh, Charlie? In terms of future opportunities, the issue is, is it all likely that there'll be an opportunity like 1973-4 or 1982 even, when equities generally are just mouth-watering? I think there's a very excellent chance that neither Warren and I, or I will live to see either of those occasions again. Uh, if so, uh, Berkshire's not going to have a lot of no-brainer opportunities. We're going to have to grind ahead the way we've been doing it recently, which is not all bad. It's not impossible that we'll get some mouth-watering opportunities. I mean, it, you just don't know in markets. It's unbelievable what markets do over time. And since you brought up interest rates, uh, you know, in Japan, the 10-year bond is selling to yield five-eighths of 1%. Five-eighths of 1%. I don't think there's anybody in our annual meeting of 20 years ago, certainly including Charlie and myself, who would have dreamt that a 10-year bond uh, of a country, you know, Running a significant deficit would be selling at five eighths of one percent. I mean, would you say so, Charlie? <laughs> would I ever? <laughs> and it's but strange things happen. Strange things happen. But if that could happen in Japan, something much less horrible for the investing class uh, could happen in the United States. It's not unthinkable. I mean, we could be in for a considerable period when the average, intelligent, diversified investor in common stocks uh, using fancy paid advisors just doesn't do very well. But you can argue that if what we warned against and hope doesn't happen with derivatives should happen, it might create enormous opportunities for us in some arena. I mean, you know, but, uh, we wouldn't be that might very well turn out to be good for us. If, uh, if you get chaotic markets, you had, you had a somewhat disorganized market in junk bonds last year because there were a lot of them created uh, much faster than the funds available to absorb them uh, were coming in. Now this year you have just the opposite situation. You have money pouring into uh, the junk bond funds, billion dollars a week roughly, and that's changed the whole price situation. The world hasn't changed that much. It's just that that uh, the chaos has left the market uh, for those instruments. You have over a hundred billion dollars of cash. Um, Berkshire, Berkshire does. I Berkshire. Mean, yeah. No, well, I don't yeah. even see how much. Yeah. Got. Maybe you do. Um, you, Berkshire has over a hundred billion in cash, and you say that you always want this company to be a fortress. So, how much? cash should an ordinary investor have on a percentage basis, do you think? It, it depends on their personal situation. It, 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 if you're working in something where you're, you're living off your, your, your paycheck from, from week to week, you want to have a little cash around and, and you certainly don't want to have a credit card that's maxed out or anything like that. Uh, but if, you know, if, 
if your house is paid off, if you don't have big living expenses, you got a portfolio of, of decent diversified businesses, uh, you don't really need any cash. So you can be more cash free than Berkshire is? Yeah, yeah, I've got responsibility. You know, we've got insurance claims. We could have hurricanes that, you know, would happen. Uh, all kinds of things where you might have to pay out billions of dollars. And I've got over a million people that own shares that are counting on me to run the place so we get through periods like that. But if I were retired, I had a, say, a million dollar portfolio of stocks that was paying me 30000 a year in dividends or something of the sort. And my children had been growing, the house was paid off and everything. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about having a lot of cash around.